Hey guys, Stephen here. I wanted to share some scripture with you guys. Uh, first of all, um, how you guys doing um, during this uh, coronavirus uh, era that we're living in? Uh, are you guys, you guys encouraged? You guys feeling fearful? You guys uh, stressed out? Uh, how you guys doing? Um, I want to read some scripture and share a little bit that's been, you know, that, that I've been meditating on and uh, and maybe it'll be encouraging for you guys. Uh, Matthew chapter Matthew chapter eight. Um, I'm going to go up to verse 18. It's the title of this this topic uh, this topic of this first part is called the cost of discipleship. Um, put this up just a little bit. Okay, it says, and when Jesus saw great multitudes about him. He gave command to depart to the other side. I mean, to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Okay. When a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has, nothing, has, has nowhere to lay his head. And the other of his disciples said to him, Lord, let us go and bury my father and Jesus said to him follow me and let the dead bury their own dead and then it says now when he had come unto the boat when he had come to the boat he uh, his disciples followed him and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with waves and he Jesus was asleep so imagine that. So Jesus, Jesus uh, gets in the boat with his disciples. These are little boats. I've been to the Sea of Galilee. It's about 14 miles wide, uh, long, and you know, 15, uh, 12, uh, 14 miles wide, uh, 12, uh, seven miles wide, 14 miles long. Um, it's like a big lake. Okay, it's not like the Atlantic Ocean or anything like that. You can see the other side. Um, so they get on this little boat and they're crammed in this little boat. And a storm came up on it, and it, I mean, waves were crashing. I mean, you can imagine, you're, you're, you know, going on. And Jesus was taking a nap. Jesus was asleep in the boat, and all this commotion was going on. And, man, these guys were freaking out. These disciples were freaking out. But Jesus was taking a nap. Okay. And it says, Then his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. In other words, Jesus, we're going to die. This is bad. This is bad news. This is bad. Look what's happening. I mean, the, the boat's rocking, and I mean, they're all the waves are getting splashed with water, and they're waking up Jesus in the middle of Jesus' nap. Can you imagine Jesus? You know, he, he's just like, "Oh, what's going on?" He's laying there. He's like, "Oh, what's going on?" And they're like, "We're going to die." But, but he, Jesus said to them, Why are you fearful, O oh, you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. Not just calm, it was great calm. It was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be? that even the wind and the sea obey him. So, that's all I'm going to read right there. So, what I, want to, what I want to explain to you is this. You know, we've got this coronavirus thing going on. Man, we've got winds and waves. You know, I've got stuff going on with my family and my wife, you know, going through treatments. Things are like the waves and the wind. I mean, it's like swirling around and the, the boat... We're, the boat of our life is just being rocked, man. Some of you are losing your jobs. Uh, some of you haven't been to work in a long time, which I understand. I haven't been to work either. I just got back to go, go to work. Praise God. And things are just being shaken up in your world. Your boat's being rocked. But, but you've got the news media swirling around like the wind telling you every bad thing yeah you're gonna die corona's gonna kill you I mean it's, it's, I mean everything's everything's bad you watch the news everything is bad okay you watch you get on Facebook or social media or Twitter or whatever thing you are it's all you get is bad and all you can uh, and you're stressed out 
that's a much like those disciples were. They were so stressed out because they had all this stuff going on and they're freaking out. But what was Jesus doing? Jesus was just resting. Jesus was taking a nap. And so Jesus gets up and say, Ye of little faith. He asks his disciples, Why are you so fearful? In other words, why are you guys freaking out? Uh, yeah, it is scary. You, you, you know, you could die. You could perish. You could die. Yeah. But you know what? Everybody's going to die one day. But Jesus tells them. Jesus asks them why they're so fearful. Guys, I want to tell you this. Guys, we've got to trust God. And I'm preaching to myself. We've got to trust God. Jesus is in control. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you're a little stressed out, which is, it's normal. You're human to be stressed out. But you know, listen. Just remember... The word of God is true. Let God be true and every man a liar, the Bible says. So we got to be trusting God. Jesus will take care of you. We don't know how Jesus might do it, but Jesus is going to take care of you. And that's what I'm trusting too. So guys, when you're feeling like your boat's being rocked and you're stressed out, you need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, save me. You know, maybe the Lord will say in your spirit, you know what? You have little faith. Why are you so fearful? So, we need to be trusting the Lord. Jesus is going to take care of us. And I want to end it with this. The scripture says that there's no other name in heaven or on earth by which man shall be saved but Jesus Christ. And that Jesus' name is above all other names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father, the Bible says. So Jesus' name is above all names. See, the coronavirus or COVID-19, you know, it's just a name. And I know like, I know the news media and politicians, they love just saying the phrase COVID-19. COVID-19. Coronavirus. COVID-19. They love saying it. They love saying social distancing. Social distancing. And that just gets so old. We're tired of hearing it. But let me tell you this. You know what? Jesus' name is above COVID-19, coronavirus, social distancing. Jesus is above that. Let me tell you one thing else about social distancing. Jesus loved people so much, even the sick and leopard, and Jesus took time to touch them and to heal them and to be there for the sick when they needed him. Jesus never social distanced himself from anybody. So, whether you die of coronavirus, whether you die in a car wreck, whether you die of whatever you may die, you're going to die one day. Okay, 10 out of 10 people died. We're part of the ultimate statistic, 10 out of 10 people are going to die. Okay, but the thing is, where are you going when you die? Are you going to heaven? Are you going to go to hell? Where are you going to go? There's no in between. See, see, the reason why people die is because of sin. Sin. Sin is breaking God's commandments. God has laws. You break the law, you suffer the consequences. There's the law of gravity. You may not say, well, I don't believe in God. You know, that's like saying, I don't believe in gravity, but gravity's still there. If you jump off of a roof and hit the ground, you're going to suffer the consequences. But you're either death or you're going to break a, break a bone. Okay? You've got you to gotta understand God's got laws and it's his Ten Commandments. And the Bible says, if you've not keeping God first and all you've do all you've done, then you've broken the first commandment. You haven't kept God first in your life. Number two says, if you've ever bowed down to any statues, prayed to statues, made up a God that's in, in, made more suitable for yourself, saying, "Well, my God would never create hell. My God's this kind of God." This, you've made up a God that's more suitable for yourself. That's a called idolatry. Number three, of the third commandment says. You shouldn't use the Lord God, your Lord, Lord God's name in vain. If you ever use God's name as a cuss word, you know, say God and end it with damn. Okay, God's last name is not damn, guys. Okay, if you've used God's name in vain, you're a blasphemer, and that's what Jesus was accused of. Jesus was accused because he said, "I and the Father are one. I am God in human flesh," and they accused Jesus of blasphemy and crucified him. Number four is you should keep the Sabbath day holy. If you kept if you if you kept the seventh and given every every week, given one day of every week to the time to spend with God and to rest. Okay, that's that's not obeying the Sabbath day. Okay. 
Number five is honor your father and mother. Have you always honored your father and mother, or or have you dishonored them? Or do you have do you have hatred toward your parents? Maybe maybe you have some unresolved conflict with your parents. If you have done that, then you've you've been in rebellion, which is the same as witchcraft. The scripture says. Number six is you shall not murder or kill. More or less murder. If you've been angry in your heart, you've committed murder in your heart. Okay. Okay. Number seven is adultery. If you ever looked with someone to lust after them, someone you're not married to, okay, uh, you committed adultery in your heart. Okay. Number eight is you shall not you shall not steal. It doesn't matter uh, the, the 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 dollar amount. If, if I take a like a penny out of your wallet or a hundred dollars, I'm still a thief. If you've ever stolen one thing in your entire life, you're a thief for life. Number nine. You ever told a lie before? Half truth, exaggeration. Maybe you maybe you say, well, I just stretched the truth a little bit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how far you stretch the truth or what color your what color the lie is. It's still a lie. Okay, you're a liar for life. Number 10 and the last one is you shall not covet. You ever desire something that didn't belong to you? Well, I wish I really wish that car was mine. That was my, you know, you, 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 you've desired something that's not yours. You're not being content. You broke that one. So if you've broke any of those, let's say you've broken even lying and dishonoring your parents or, or stealing, then you'd be a lying thief and a, and a rebellious, rebellious person. If God judges you on judgment day, which he will, because all of us will stand before God, it says. It's destined for man to die once, and after that, the judgment. Hebrews 9, 27 says, you'll face judgment, and you would be guilty of violating God's standard of goodness. And none of us have ever done that. And God's just punishment for, for sinners is hell and the lake of fire. That's God's judgment. That's God's punishment for sin. It's unrepented. So... All of a sudden, you're in a courtroom here on earth. Your fine is $50,000, let's say. You don't have the money to pay for it. A stranger walks into the courtroom, says, Judge, I'll pay the fine for him. I'll take care of it. Uh, gives a check. Judge, check for $50,000. You're free to go. The judge says, you can go home. Why? Not because you're sorry. Not because you said you won't do it again. Because someone else paid the fine for you. They took the punishment for you. They, they, they did what it took to make the sacrifice to make you right in the sight of of the court standard. So that's exactly what God's done. You and I deserve hell because of our sin. But Jesus, Jesus paid the fine. We broke the law of God, but Jesus paid the fine when he died on the cross. They they, they whipped him, they beat him, they crucified him, they put nails in his in his hands and his feet, they put a crown of thorns on him, they ripped his beard, they punched him, they spit on him, they said, if you're the son of God, come down from the cross. But Jesus did that in love. God loved the world so much that he let his precious son die a painful death on the cruel cross. And then they removed him from the cross once he, was, once he died, put him in a tomb. He was there for three days until Saturday, the Sabbath, around sundown. And Jesus Christ rose victoriously from the grave. And today he's alive. Jesus is alive today and he's coming back real soon. Okay, we don't know the time of the day, but we do know he's coming back soon. Okay? So we need to repent of our sins. Okay, we need to know that Jesus is returning and he's going to judge he's going to judge the world in righteousness, not happiness, but righteousness. So you need to repent of your sin. Say, God, I've I've broken your law. I deserve the hell you're going to send me to in the lake of fire because of my sin, because I'm wicked. I need Jesus to change me, make me a new person. And uh, clean up my heart. Have me help me have new desires in my heart, my, my mind, and my heart, and just make me clean in Jesus' name. Say something like that. Tell God I need to make I need to make things right, guys. If you'll do that <clears throat> and continue in His Word, continue in His Word, you'll have peace in your life. You'll have forgiveness in your life. And uh, when when the storms of the news media and the Facebook and the Corona and whatever else is going on in your life starts starts shaking the boat. Just know that your faith is in Jesus Christ. That you don't have to be fearful and worry about what's going on because you know what? What the cool thing about this story is Jesus, when he got up, he says he told the storm to stop. And it says there was a great calm. And guess what the cool thing is? It was calm, and they marveled. Wow, look what Jesus has done. And they made it to the other side. Guys, 
we're coming across to the other side. One way or another, we are coming across to either the other side of all this pandemic stuff. We're coming across. You've got to put your faith in the Lord. He's going to get you to the other side. We don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it. And that's that's what I tell myself. That's why I, that's why I read his word and, and I meditate on it. So, guys, hopefully this is encouraging you guys. And uh, give you something to think about, guys. Thank you all for listening. God bless.